So we're uh, here with uh, Lou Mormon from Rackspace uh, uh, at the Rackspace Cloud. Maybe you could uh, start by filling us in on how things have been uh, changing with where it used to be Maso. What's the latest with the, the Rackspace Cloud offering and, uh, and what's the roadmap from here? Yeah, so we've really consolidated our branding around Rackspace. Um, we've had multiple brands for a number of our offers, Moso being one that you've known. And, uh, and actually just yesterday we got our full site out, the Rackspace Cloud. So the Moso brand really is, doesn't exist anywhere on that offering anymore. So um, we have the three offers there, Cloud Sites, Cloud Files, and Cloud Servers. We also have Mail Trust, which is a mail provider um, that is just doing fantastically. And we've made it Rackspace email and applications or email and apps. And so right now you can find basically all the pieces that we offer under Rackspace.com. And really, I mean, we, these are all, we think, complimentary offers. They all are going to interplay together. Um, all of them, we want to put Fanatical support behind and are putting Fanatical support behind. So it really just made sense to use the Rackspace brand, which is the um, core brand for the company. Now, how are you sorting out what some of the, the how you, you know, define the offerings at this point? I, I gather you're having a lot of conversations with customers about what their needs are. You've obviously got a pretty good base of, uh, of enterprise customers from the, the managed hosting operation. Uh, what are you hearing about uh, what the, uh, the, where the interest is in cloud and, and how, uh, you, uh, how folks want to use it? Yeah, so I mean, I would say, um, you know, right now everyone wants to learn about it. I mean, this is sort of a, it's obligatory for anyone in IT to understand it, to get their head around it, and to start to play with it. And so I think that that's very common. I mean, we're having conversations with pretty much every customer about it and educating them. And I would say that a lot of them are experimenting with it, but I think that they are doing it for archiving, or for test dev, or running small public websites. Um, you know, it's, it's early, um, but a lot of them are seeing the power of it. And I think that what you're going to, what's going to emerge is, them starting to sort of leak it into their core operations. And, um, you know, some companies are going to move faster than others, of course. Um, I also think you're going to have startups that are going to just start in the cloud and not go anywhere else. Um, but, you know, we are constantly talking to them about how do we make it easy? How do we make it simple? Um, there's a lot of people confused about it. Right. And so, you know, we're trying to, you know, one of the things we really want to do is make it simple and make it supported um, because that's going to help adoption. And, um, you know, I think so far that. That's proving true. I mean, I think if you take an example, just like cloud servers, one of the things we do with cloud servers is we have persistent storage, and we have DNS integrated, and we have standard static IPs. You know, these are sort of concepts that people are used to. Right. Is that when you when you fire up a server, people are used to having those kinds of things to sort of launch an application. This makes it much easier to get going in the cloud. So um, we're sort of very aware of those kinds of elements and sort of how we create the offer and how we design it. Are, are the questions changing as you as you, you talk to uh, customers? Uh, because, uh, as you said, there's a sort of evolving interest in the cloud. It seemed like last year it was just, what is it? How might we use it? Um, now there seems to be a lot of discussion of security, for example, which seems like a more finite, how do we make it work? Um, what, where do you see the, the conversation standing with, uh, with the enterprises who have uh, more complicated operations that could benefit uh, uh, from, from cloud uh, operations? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, look, I, I think that they are absolutely concerned about security, want to understand security. And um, now, look, the good news is we've had a relationship with lots of big businesses for a long time, and we have sort of a, our MO is to be completely transparent, and, um, you know, we're very experienced in the SAS 70 world and all those kinds of things. So I think what we're ended up doing, we are having lots of conversations with folks about what is this software, how is it built, what are the differences between doing it in the physical world, um, and how best to use it. And, you know, everyone has different tolerances for these things, and mm -hmm. has different interests, and has different points of view. Um, you know, hypervisors are an extra layer. Um, hypervisors haven't proven to be something that have had many security issues. It doesn't mean that there's not some some potential problem with hypervisors, but this has not been an area that has created sort of general concern. And I think some people are more aware of that than others, uh, are more in tune with it, or more sophisticated in thinking about it. So, I, mean, I think this is one of the issues. I don't think in the long run security is going to be the issue that keeps keeps folks from adopting the cloud. I think it's a 
I think it's a short-term education process, and I think that security is going to continue to get better and better and better. The ability to customize the security at the application layer and at the network layer is going to get better. Um, and I, I just don't think it's going to be the long-term so We talked uh, uh, recently about the, the launch of uh, Building 43, your new community. Uh, what, uh, uh, how's that going so far, or what are you learning from it? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, what sort of... Uh, uh, Topics of discussion seem to be uh, the hot ones there. Yeah, well, I mean, so it's, I think we're 10 days into it or mm -hmm. something like that. So, you know, Robert was just with us here. Um, Robert Scoble. Uh, Robert Scoble. Right. So, um, we are, I mean, we're pleased with it. I think we, you know, it was a something we wanted to get out there and get going. So, uh, I think we got it out there. We got some really good content. Um, I think that people are starting to understand the concept, which one of the things we're trying to do is provide a place where people can learn about all these new tools right. and figure out how to actually use them. So, but we're finding our way in terms of how best to do that. Is it videos? Is it description? Is it posts? Is it um, you know forums? You know, we're, we're sort of finding our way, and we're getting lots of good feedback from users. Um, I, I think we're very pleased with how it's kicked off. I wouldn't say that you know we have all the answers yet. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep trying things. We're going to keep getting feedback, and you know, but it does seem like the momentum is very good. So we're we're pleased with it. Um, at Data Center Knowledge, we're all about the data centers, so I figured I would ask, you know, as uh, Rackspace has developed the, the, the cloud operation, obviously you've still got a large managed hosting operation, um, how has that impacted your, your, your data centers, either in terms of the, the demand, are you guys good to go for the, the capacity you have now, uh, or still looking for space? We're always looking for space. So if there's a good deal, we'll, we'll uh, find space and, and we'll take space. So we're always looking for space, and, and we do feel, despite the bad economy, you know, we've posted pretty good growth numbers. And um, we did take down a new facility in, in Virginia, right. and we started deploying to that facility this month. So you know, it's live and, and That was pretty quick. It was pretty quick. So, you know, um, that was a DuPont Fabros facility, right. which is, you know, sort of ready to go. So we had to deploy our services and our network and those kinds of things, and we were able to do it pretty quickly. I will say the cloud creates some new opportunities for us because one of the differences between cloud and traditional dedicated hosting is the cloud is very, very prescriptive. And you know exactly what server you're going to put in. It's going to be repeated all the time. Um, and this gives you some different design possibilities for efficiencies and those kinds of things. So um, we're spending a lot of time really trying to understand that. I mean, I think this is one of the reasons why Google has been able to run really, really efficient data centers is right. because every single server is identical. They know exactly how much power it's going to draw. And when you have that, you can really sort of start to play with design elements um, to drive more and more cost out. So this is something that we think is exciting about the cloud um, and something that we're going to take advantage of. You've done some interesting efficiency things in your UK data center, uh, involving uh, renewable energy, some of that. Uh, any of that being put to work in Virginia or those sort of different uh, circumstances? Well, I mean, we have the benefit there of having, uh, you know, a, a very green utility provider. <laughs> so, and, right. and look, we also designed it from the ground up, so we were able to do some things to, to really uh, make progress. Was that it, a greenfield or a retrofit? It, well, it was, it was a shell, so okay. we built it from the shell. So it was basically a complete greenfield. Um, whereas in Virginia, we're sort of going into a facility. So, I mean, we're, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the data center engineering expert, so uh, we can set that up at another time. But, but, you know, power efficiency, you know, is not just sort of the right thing to do, but it's, it really drives the economics. So there are great incentives to try and be as green as possible and drive costs as low as possible. So we're constantly, you know, if you can squeeze a, an extra, you know, penny off your uh, charges you know, across all that power makes a big difference. So we're constantly looking for ways to do it. Hey, thanks a lot, Lou. Okay, sure.